So, welcome back. Picking up where we left off. Birds are on ice. We'll get them in the kitchen and show y'all how to debone them. The way I break my birds down is pretty simple. I do legs and thighs first, then the wings, then I come back and take the breasts off. So, for the, I try to do this backwards, it's gonna be a little weird. Come in here and just cut this skin on either side. Then you just grab it and kind of put a little pressure on the back there. And pull it out and you can hear that pop, pop. That's this joint dislocating. And then you come in, especially when it's pulled back, you can see that knot of meat. You don't want to leave that behind, that's delicious. But you come in and you cut and take that. And then you can see the joint. You just continue on cutting. And you go right through that joint and kind of try to get that piece of meat off the back as well. And there's your bone in quarter there. Then your wings, you can kind of wiggle them and you see the, you can see the joint there. You don't want to go too far with the wings. If you go too far, you're going to be getting into your breast, which either way, it's not too bad for me because I like that little extra hunk of meat on my chicken or my chicken wing, but just come in right there. Then you go right through that joint and come out chicken wing and it didn't get too much into the breast meat. Mom. Same thing on the other side. This is all kind of doing a little backwards trying to sh make sure y'all can see what I'm doing. So, You see that one? That got just a hair bit of the breast. Not too bad though. Then the breast, I like to come in. You can see the breastbone right there and I put a thumb just inside the carcass kind of get it get a good hold on it just know where your fingers are in relation to your knife but you come in and just follow that right down then I like to turn it around and you can feel that wishbone right there. Come just down the inside of that. And there's that. And then you've got your breast and your little tender flapping on the inside. But you can just follow right down the inside all the way. You can kind of see that line. That's going to be the end of your breast. You can just come out right there. You see, there's not hardly any meat left behind, and whatever's left behind will get used up in broth or something else. You got a skin, we leave everything skin on. I like to cook them skin on because I can get the grill really hot and throw that skin side down, and half the time it'll burn and crisp, and but it saves the meat, puts the flavor into it, but it keeps your meat from burning when your grill's really hot. And you do the same thing on the other side. So, not much left on that. Be good, boil it down, and get good broth out of it.
So there's another. Every now and then you get a little bare spot right there. I'm a little rusty. If you get it just right, that'll be meat even through that joint, that knuckle right there. I think all I'm gonna record of me cutting is probably those first four birds, which, you know, that's my first four of the season. I'm a little, little rusty, but you get the idea of the process and I'm gonna probably stop recording and just get after the rest of them because I got, you know, what, 32 more birds to go. Want to get them done and packed on ice. Next, we will show you, once we get a few birds cut up, um, Brianna will show you how we wrap them and store them. Okay, so I think those first four I did were bullets. I just wanted to show you guys the, the rooster here. They're got a little more meat on them still. We, we killed them a little too young. They're going to be extra tender and delicious. It's still a lot of meat. But. A lot, a lot bigger bird. Okay, so for our meat, we usually do separate the thighs and the breasts. So we'll do packages of thighs, and we do four thighs in each package, four breasts per package. And the paper we use, make sure it's, um, so it's not technically butcher paper, I think it's called freezer paper. So it's like a butcher paper, but it's got a heavy wax coating on it, which helps prevent uh, frostbite or freezer burn. And if you don't have the good heavy paper, it's best if you um, saran wrap it first. But just like she's showing you there, you fold it around, meet the ends up, roll the ends down, turn the package over, and then fold the ends in and tape it. And if you get yourself a nice tape dispenser for this, it makes life way easier. And once you've done that, you can grab you a Sharpie and make sure to label when and what's in the package. Also a quick tip, get yourself a pair of tongs handy and then this can be a one person job and you don't get your hands all chickeny that way when you go to package it you don't get, you know, 
chicken slime all over the outside of your package. It keeps your, keeps your paper nice, neat, and clean. These are the chicken tenders. They're that small inner breast, and we love those for fried chicken just because you can pull the package straight out and not have to cut anything up. Just drop them, start dredging them in flour, and go straight to frying. The uh, whole breasts cut into strips are actually a little bit more tender than the tenders, which aren't actually that tender. But they're still delicious. Okay, so before I forget, we don't package our wings whole like this. We, um, we use that freezer paper for most stuff, but we got pokies on these and we, we vacuum seal our wings just because it's easier that way. So the wings, you just come in, get you a good sharp knife, then you can just cut straight through that and it'll, I mean, it'll cut right through the bones if you want, or you'll get better at finding the joint. And then these guys, you can sort of see where the joint meets. And I found if you just kind of go, oh, I'm rusty. Let's find our angle. There it is, the sweet spot. Try that again. Let's go this way. There's that sweet spot. Just kind of try to find a point of reference for you on these wings. So cut right through that, and just, just I don't know. You can kind of see that knuckle if you cut just on the flat side of it. It'll go straight through like butter and leave you a nice wing. So you can see, there's the knuckle. Now if we go just to the uphill side of it, straight through like butter. No resistance. And for the little, little tip here, it's best just kind of, you can see sort of a line there along the wing, just follow that straight down. There. And with this stuff, it's a the more you practice, the easier it'll be to find your joints. Also, chicken bones are really soft, so a sharp knife helps. Like that, I'm not getting it perfect. It's it's going right through the joint, but it's kind of ticking the tips of the ball, balls of the ball joints off. And that's okay. It doesn't hurt anything. So 
my audio didn't work out for the broth. I also forgot to video the first batch of broth, so there's my first batch of broth, and I'll show you the next one. On my second batch in the pot, I've got six carcasses and a bunch of wing tips and leg and thigh bones, wad, both hands full, just a big old wad of bones in there. And to that, I also added uh, two onions. That used to be one onion, but it split apart when I peeled it. A head of garlic and a good sized wad of thyme. The onions, I just quarter them up. The smaller ones, I just cut in half. The garlic, I just sliced that down the side, cut right through the middle of all the cloves on it. Kinda break them up a little bit and toss them in the pot. So with everything in the pot, all the carcasses and onions, garlic, all that stuff, I can fit about two and a half gallons of water. So add the water, boil it for about three or more hours, at least three hours, and it'll yield about two gallons of broth. You lose quite a bit when you're boiling it. And there is a look at the finished broth. Thanks for watching. Hope y'all learned something. I uh, kind of wish I'd have showed the later birds, but by the time we got around to doing the rest of them, I really got in a groove. We were playing a bunch of music and just trying to get finished. Uh, I'm all still be boiling more bones, making broth all day long today. Next year we're hoping to get a, a 20 gallon pot so we can do it all in one or two batches instead of a whole bunch of small batches. Uh, thanks for watching. Hope y'all enjoyed and please like, share, subscribe. Catch you in the next one.